Become a member on Patreon to receive all exclusive content and to get access to the ad-free video version of the interviews. The link is in the description. But he also experienced that there was another aspect of him that was like all light, um, that was done nothing but pure love, that could also observe the experience, but wasn't necessarily the part that was trapped and transferred into the black box, which is another part of the cloning thing where they, they actually put a black box over the body and do an electrical type of signal to the box. And then it somehow extracts the soul out of the body into the black box. And then the black box is transferred over eventually to another clone body that's like in all these drawers, like they have all these clone bodies in it. another upgrade perhaps at the same age. And then the black box is put back on the body, re-electrocuted or whatever, and then it jiggles the body and awake. And then he basically finds himself back in the other body, which is a clone body. Like the Dark Side of Cupid book, I got people report to me things that they thought it was a twin flame, but they didn't fall into them being an abductee or alien experiences or in my lab, they just had this bombshell of a you know, twin flame and then they followed. There's a lot of new age narratives that will want to promote this. And it's, I believe it is, it's the underbelly is some kind of demonic thing or, or beings. It, I think it's a being that acts through a particular conduit who is like, quote, the twin flame, like the twin flame runner or whatever, um, but not necessarily. Um, but it's like another being, and I think it's a higher level cosmic being, although sometimes it's actually observed to be like a, a snake-like being, a reptilian, or any number of appearances. One woman in, in the dark side of Cupid, she saw it as the Mephistopheles, um, which is the classic, one of the classic demonic ones. I think that was in the Faustian bargain um, story, but it's kind of like a bat-winged um, creature. She saw something like that. So. There's different ones that I believe that are really directing it in a, in a much more powerful way. But the way that um, Aurora describes it helps us understand how the magicians of this manipulation overlay of the, I'm just gonna call it the Luciferic, whatever. Um, they manipulate the true life forms here to create belief systems and they're like script keepers. So when you talk about creating the code and the script, they're like the script keepers, code keepers through ritual and manipulation to create, oh, what can we create to make us believe in it and to draw our attention and our beliefs towards something which gives it power so they could uh, basically, we call it, get energy and natural resources from us. So it's all about what, what they can believe about something. So they can create a lot of the belief systems I I've even wonder that if a lot of the original myths were types of programs or archetypal programs of belief that could, you know, be engineered so that we believe in whatever that creates something for them. So they're kind of like predators and parasites living in a realm that's inhabited by true life force beings like us <laughs> who haven't disconnected unless they make the decision to do so. Um, and then they become like um, parasites when they disconnect or maybe if they're real traumatized and they're not connected to their eternal spirit when they've turned, then they become like parasites. So there's, I think there's something to this whole ritual thing and what they're making agreements and oaths and alliances with and then using that power to manipulate reality and people to cause, they're just directing the script and directing the reality to loose feed our dramas in our lives, which sounds really totally paranoid and crazy. But so I guess that's why I think the introduction of a lot of these high technology digital communication systems have actually, hmm, how should I say it? There's a word for it, entrained our minds and our consciousness to be more in alignment with the directing system. How can we lock it in and, you know, lock it in, lock in our consciousness and our energy to wherever they want to direct it. But I see that if it's not organically living in our beingness, as opposed to our mental, um, then it's pulling away from the natural beingness that helps us align more clearly with our true essence. Yeah, I mean, they're always looking for bodies. So there's the other thing about, I mean, one of the things that Malanga said is that they, they had a shortage of bodies of even their own. And so that's why they would, you know, put their 
he called it their active alien memory hard I don't know, it's like a hard drive consciousness in us because they didn't have a body to put it in and then they lived through us as hosts almost like a you know <laughs> like an implant and um cause a discoherence between our spirit so that they live their agenda and their identity through us so a lot of times people i think they they have this alien identity thing going on where one needs to ask the question is this a real identity of ours or is this the identity that's um, hide, basically piggybacking through us that may have many lives or many memories of other systems, but is it really us?